Thank you, everyone. It was still pitch black as I started my walk back home from the hospital. I'd finished my second year of medical school just one week prior, though that memory seemed to fade with every step in the early morning fog. A red traffic light prompted another one of my many deep breaths. And although my white coat was starched, my stethoscope in pocket, and my pager attached, I still didn't feel like a doctor. After work, I'd be exhausted. But without fail, my spirit would be revived with one statement from my roommate, Daniel. You want to believe the day I just had. Every night, we'd share a story of what happened to us in the hospital. Often, it was hilarious. You wouldn't believe the number of times we presented on the wrong patient. But other times, it was heartbreaking. It's not easy to see the pain in someone's eyes as they say goodbye to their partner of 70 years. But always sharing these stories was therapeutic, a way for us to commiserate on the life of a medical student, to acknowledge that it's OK not to be perfect, to recognize we were not alone. When we first started story sharing stories with our classmates, we were met with hearty laughs, but more surprisingly, more importantly, stories in return. Our feelings of discomfort became communal. And as we sat in the cafeteria sharing different stories on patients we had seen, attendings we had worked with, or tasks we hoped to avoid, we had created our own micro-environment of vulnerability. These small, bite-sized stories allowed heavy topics to feel lighter, as though they could be passed around and shared like the bags of potato chips we were eating. But just like our chips, these stories vanished suddenly. COVID came and closed our cafeterias, sending us home to complete our rotations, disrupting both our sense of community and our sense of belonging. Our stories of joy, humor, sorrow, and inspiration remained confined within. So we decided to let them out. When Daniel and I created Diary of a Med Student, we wanted to create a virtual cafeteria, a place where med students across the world could create and share something anything during a time where we felt more alone than ever. We shouted out to the world, hoping someone would echo back to us. And they did. First from friends in our school, then our friends' schools, then from schools we hadn't heard of, states we hadn't visited, and countries we couldn't see. In a time where we felt most isolated, we heard others saying that they were alone, too. We were not alone in feeling lonely. Humans are social creatures. And while it may be obvious that loneliness is associated with depression and impaired cognitive performance, it may be less so that it affects your cardiovascular morbidity and all-cause mortality. When controlled for factors such as sex, age, and chronic diseases, loneliness has a statistically significant effect on the risk of dying. When it's prolonged, it becomes a chronic state of stress. It tightens your blood vessels, disrupts your wakefulness, and leads to the massive overactivation of inflammatory cascades. And these physiologic changes, I think, help provide some context to the most sobering data points of the pandemic. One in four adults will experience symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder, with those on the front lines hit even harder. Essential workers are 20% more likely to experience these symptoms. 
60% more likely to be hospitalized, and 15% more likely to consider suicide. This research indicates that yearning for connection does not signify weakness. In a way, you're advocating for your own health. And in finding your connections, you are building a community. And while not everyone can become part of your community, your community can come from anyone. I used to always think that the only people in my life I could share stories to were my closest friends and family. Those who have seen the good, the bad, the ugly in my life, and to be honest, wouldn't be surprised with what they heard next. But I now think of my connections similar to snacks I'd purchase at the hospital cafeteria. Some are like hot chips, because certain stories are served best with that little bit of heat. Others are like chicken noodle soup. Talking to them makes me feel warm and comforted inside. And others, they're apples. Because while the cookies are tempting, you know that apples are what you really need for your health. And this ability to mix and match is what's so incredible about our differences. That even in a brief moment, with those you may barely know, you can make a connection. During my first year in residency, I spent the entirety of an overnight shift with the seventh floor nurse manager trying to figure out a way to transfer our patient for urgent induction chemotherapy. Neither of us had any idea of the logistics for such a move. And between our shared exasperation as to why fax machines are used in the hospital, I still don't know, we were able to connect over the sacrifices our families made to send us to graduate school. Our patient eventually transferred, ending a seamlessly endless night. And while I never saw this nurse again, she penned an indelible chapter into my diary of a doctor. Stories link us. And even if your story is not perfect, not fully formed, or has no beginning and end, it deserves to be heard. Now, in the age where physical interactions have become much more seldom by necessity, we often rely on sharing stories virtually. This allows us to build two communities, one online, one offline, that serve different purposes but remain equally cathartic. I recall a particularly difficult day in the hospital, one where I had to deliver the news to a patient that his biopsy returned positive for metastatic testicular cancer. This process felt as though I was looking into a, a filtered mirror. This patient was exactly my age, also the eldest child, and stressed about his favorite sports teams a little too much too. But the bravery with which he received his diagnosis stunned me. His emotions did not seem to break until he described his angst and how he would tell his family. So when I described my own thoughts to my own family, they listened openly, intently, honestly, but I found myself needing more. There are certain moments, certain experiences in our lives where we may not have the perfect person we can share them with. We may have our spicy chips, our chicken noodle soups, our apples and our cookies, but perhaps the snack we need the most is a samosa, something we can't get from our local stores but need nonetheless. With Diary, I was able to read stories from students in Illinois, Florida, and Texas, also lamenting on how they broke bad news to their patients. It did not matter we went to different schools or that we had never met at all. What mattered was our shared experiences. We were all parts of the same team. We all had a seat in the same cafeteria. In all the ways that COVID has shaped us, 
I think forcing us to assess our own environments, our own priorities, our own insecurities was one of the most profound. Loneliness is subjective. What constitutes loneliness for an extrovert may be an introvert's perfect evening. For me, I couldn't de-stress with my friends, visit my family on important occasions, or grab a burrito after the gym. And with Diary, we really saw this spectrum of reflection. Some stories retold the trauma of surgery after motor vehicle accidents, whereas others described the humor of wearing high heels in the hospital. And that was the beauty of it. Reflection does not always mean spilling your deepest, darkest secrets. Sometimes all it means is taking something small, bringing it to the cafeteria, and realizing others brought something too. There's much to learn from writing in a diary. It is inherently private, but tangibly public. Internal feelings are transformed into external words, and while we may not want anyone to read what we've written, sometimes we secretly do. And best of all, it's easy to move on from the stories we hope to forget. We simply turn to the next day, the next blank page, and start again from scratch. With Diary of a Med Student, I found solace in sharing my experiences with strangers, reading their stories, hearing their voice. And while it was the medicine that connected us, it was the process that formed our community. That no matter who we are, where we come from, or what our name is, we are truly not alone. Thank you very much.